Hello, my name is Creed and welcome to Riders Blockbuster. Have you ever felt like you're being watched? Well, in today's breakdown, our main characters are. In what begins as one friend trying to help another detox, we get a story that delves into true paranoia, and then into something far different. This movie will keep you guessing right up until the end, and once the end hits, you'll be filled with questions and some odd realizations as well. So let's delve in and talk about what happens in Resolution. Also, there will be spoilers in this breakdown, so you've been warned. And if you enjoy videos like this, then consider subscribing, because fun and funky film is what this channel is all about. We open to see a man named Mike receive a video from his friend Chris. The video is disturbing, showing Chris smoking and shooting while intermittently having breakdowns in the grass. Mike shuts his computer and tells his wife Jennifer that he will be leaving to try and help Chris out the next morning. When he arrives, Chris is shooting his gun in the air, trying to scare off the birds. He's pleasantly surprised to see Mike, and says that he's been living the dream. He asks how Mike found him, and Mike says that he sent a map, but Chris doesn't seem to remember that. He invites his friend in for some drinks. They share some small talk, but Chris realizes that he's missing his pipe. He accuses Mike of stealing the pipe, but Mike says that he sees it outside, and Chris sits on the mattress while Mike goes to get it. While Chris begins to smoke again, Mike decides that it's time to get down to business. He asks if Chris is ready to go to rehab to get clean, but Chris is adamant that he's better off as an addict. We learn that Chris did something at Mike's wedding that completely ruined it, and made most people in his life hate him. Unable to stay on subject, Chris says that he got a dog and he's really excited about it. Mike then stands up to leave, but when he goes to shake Chris's hand, he tases him and then handcuffs him to a pipe on the wall. Chris is upset to say the least, and we notice the camera do an odd burn away before we see Mike at the grocery store buying some supplies. On his way back, Mike calls his wife, informing us that there is no signal at the house and saying that Chris was willing to go along with his plan. Mike then meets Sarah, the dog that Chris was excited about, and she's just the cutest little actress. When he gets inside, Chris seems to have come around. He says that he's thought long and hard about what Mike had to say, and that he's ready to go to rehab. All Mike has to do is uncuff him, but Mike doesn't buy it. He grabs a baggie from the mattress before opening the door and letting Sarah in. Chris is excited to see the dog and then commands her to kill Mike, but she just enjoys some pets before trotting happily back outside. That night, Mike places an apple and a cup of water next to Chris before he falls asleep. In the morning, Mike goes to refill that glass when Chris suddenly jumps him. He's very quick and tases the man again before calmly filling up the mug. Two men, named Billy and Micah, show up saying that Chris owes them for some of the meth that they lent him a little while ago. Mike shows them a bat and scares them off, but they say that they'll be back later. Mike confronts Chris about what happened, and he says that he has their share down in the basement. Mike then goes down to retrieve the drugs and finds a table full of guns and a box with some peculiar pictures inside, but no sign of the drugs. Mike refers to the photos as a story, though he's not sure what the story entails. Chris says that he found those photos out near the dilapidated building and says that he's found all kinds of weird things out here, which doesn't surprise him because people do odd rituals out here all the time. Mike goes for a walk and meets some people who live out here. The trio introduce themselves as Justin, David, and Aaron, and they're in a church group. Basically, basically, our whole thing is just making sure that people know that the Celestial Messiah will land his vessel before the end of days. Also a fun little tidbit, Justin and Aaron are the directors of this movie, so that's pretty cool. We cut away with another odd burn to see that Mike left the trio and wandered into an abandoned bunker he finds a roll of film seemingly waiting for him. He heads back to the house before nightfall and looks at the film, but he can't make much out as he doesn't have a way to play it. In the night, Mike is startled awake by a woman tapping on the window. Chris says that she's probably wandered down from the local mental hospital and somehow they both fall asleep. I don't know how I would not be able to sleep for like a day after seeing this. They wake up to Billy pounding on the door. He's now got a huge wrench and is demanding his share of the drugs, but the two are scared off when a new trio arrive. The leader of the bunch asks what they're doing here, and then he introduces himself as Charles. We learn that this house belongs to Charles, and it's on his tribe's land. 
They didn't know that Chris was staying here and demand that they leave right away. Mike is able to settle a quick agreement and offers the man some money in order to stay there for another five days. Later, Mike is wandering and takes a seat near the dilapidated building. A pinecone drops from the sky, getting his attention, and he wanders over to a closed fireplace. Inside, he finds some old records and notices a nearby shed door open on its own. He goes to investigate and finds that the shed is full of supplies and equipment, including a record player and a camera. When he plays one of the records, he hears a recording of a confrontation where a woman begins to plead before the record suddenly stops. He goes back to the house and plays the film role that he found earlier, only to see a bloody man and woman. He refers to it as a weird story. Chris then asks why Mike is so interested in all of these stories, and Mike asks why Chris sent him the video that he saw at the beginning in the first place. Chris is confused, saying that he never sent him anything, and even after Mike shows him the video, he says that he sold his computer a year ago and couldn't possibly have sent that. In the morning, Mike finds a library book resting on the doorstep. Chris is deep into his detox and is having a hard time moving. He asks for some good food before begging Mike to just kill him because he can't do this anymore. Mike comforts his friend before heading off to pay Charles for their stay. He meets the man in a parking lot and hands him an envelope of cash before heading to the local library to return the found book. When he finds the place that the book goes, there's a plastic sheet of slides sitting there. He takes them to the house and looks at them, seeing a story of a man with no arm that ends with his eventual death. He thinks that someone is leaving all of these things here for him to find, and wonders why someone would do that. Chris is having a really hard time, and Mike offers him a few beers to help get him through the night. The two friends think back on good times and drink until they pass out. Mike wakes up with a photo resting on his chest, and neither of them know where it came from. The photo directs him to a gravestone where he finds a VHS tape waiting for him. When he gets back, Chris says that it's Mike that's actually acting crazy and is using these recordings and stories as a cover for something. But when they play the tape, they're both shocked to see that it's footage of when Mike tased Chris just a few days ago. They don't know what to make of the recording, but Chris is starving and demands some dinner. Mike heads back to the storage shed and finds a journal inside. He then goes to grab some dinner supplies, and on his way out he sees Charles and asks him about the shed. Charles says that years ago they rented the land to some French students that were researching folktales and were interested in some of the caverns on the property. When he gets back to the house, there's a man inside named Ted that is talking with Chris. Ted is a member of the same church group as the trio that Mike met earlier. They tell him off saying that they're not interested in what Ted is selling, and he walks away. Mike is cooking some dinner and wanders inside to show Chris the journal that he found earlier. It's written in French, but Chris notices the word telekinesis is written a lot. Mike then goes to show Chris the recording that he sent him, but when he opens his laptop, a video of them from just moments ago plays. They both freak out and Chris theorizes that the government is watching them via satellites, but Mike is adamant that someone is following them, but he doesn't know why. The next morning, Mike is doing some chores when he is suddenly shot at. He runs inside and we hear Billy scream that he wants his drugs, and a moment later, we hear as he shoots Sarah. Mike buries the dog and comforts Chris as best as he can, before heading out to investigate the caverns that Charles told him about. Inside, he sees drawings on the cave wall. As he looks, the camera burns again, but he's scared away by a man who's sleeping inside. He sprains his ankle on the way out. He then decides to go and tell Sarah's owner what happened to her. The owner lives in a trailer on a hillside. He tells the man that the dog was killed, and the owner offers him to come inside for some tea. As the man speaks, Mike notices that he has a French accent. The man introduces himself as Byron, and Byron says that he moved here from France about 30 years ago with the students that were studying folktales. The man pulls out a red herb and begins to smoke it, saying that it's a certain type of plant that seems to only grow in the local area. The man gets a bit giggly before recalling the students that he was with. He says that they disappeared, leaving some papers behind on manipulation of light waves and all of their equipment. He then says that life is peculiar, and he sees it as an infinite film. And each one has a beginning, middle, and end. Beginning, middle.
journey to end. Beginning, middle, end. Thank you so much. Mike goes back to the house and is terrified to see that Chris has tried to cut his wrist. Chris is nonchalant about it, saying that the ceramic cup wasn't strong enough to cut him deep, and then he just fell asleep. And he insists that it's no big deal. They go to bed, and Mike wakes up, hearing a scraping sound and a thud. He wanders over and finds a knife lying on the ground, and a carving in the wall that looks just like the drawings that he saw in the cavern. Mike is freaked out and begins to recall everything that he's discovered to Chris. He talks about how they've been led to these strange stories, and each of them ended in tragedy. As he talks about the endings, the scene burns again, and both Chris and Mike seem to hear the noise of that burn. They say that it's probably just the sounds of the old house, and leave it at that. It's the final day that they're allowed to be at the house, and Chris says that he appreciates what Mike has done, but he will never go to rehab, and it's important that Mike just lets him live his life and eventually die the way that he wants. The projector suddenly turns on, showing an image of Chris dead. It then switches to an image of Mike laying in a coffin. Mike uncuffs Chris, and they see the laptop is on and seemingly recording them. Then, the image on the laptop starts playing a second before they speak. They watch as Billy and Micah rush inside and bash them over the head, killing them in some future world. Both of them are equally freaked out, and Mike tries to rationalize, saying that something must be warning them to leave. Chris asks what that something wants from them, and Mike says that it must want a story. I think it wants a story with an ending. They go out to Mike's car, but find a CD resting on the center console. When they play it, they hear themselves going to speak with Charles. As they speak, it sounds like Charles shoots them both, in the recording, Mike pleads, saying that he's a father before he's killed and Charles burns their bodies. A metal sheet is knocked over by nothing, and the duo leave their car to check it out. They find an old shed with film reels littered inside. They take one outside, and they notice Billy and Micah wandering up to the house just as the laptop predicted. They then decide to open the film reel, and they see that it's a film of them in the night with a fire in the background. It seems like they're both fine in the film, and they think that the best move will be to go to the location in the film and wait for nightfall. Because I think if we can get to the end of this real film, we'll be fine. You don't know that. No, I don't, but do you have a better plan? From their perch, they see Billy and Micah partying inside the old house. They then watch as Charles and his friends walk into the house and immediately shoot the two dead. They then light the house on fire, just as the CD predicted. The men then walk away, leaving Mike and Chris to watch the flames. Chris seems to be drawn to the flames, and he rushes forward as he realizes that all of his drugs are burning. He wants one more hit, but he stops as he realizes that the flames are too hot for him to enter. He falls to his knees and admits to Mike that he needs help. He then says that he'll go to rehab, and Mike agrees to take him right away. Mike then says that their story has had a happy ending. Suddenly, something emerges from the fire. Chris gets back to his knees and begs, saying that he's sorry, and Mike asks if they can try their story another way. The film then burns, and we hear something roar. And that is where this movie ends. When I first watched Resolution, I thought the ending kind of popped out of nowhere. I still really enjoyed it, as the build-up was phenomenal and the ending itself was bizarre and unexpected, but re-watching, I've realized that everything, from the way that this is filmed, to the cryptic transition burning, was a hint at the finale. Throughout its entirety, the camera is handheld and secretive. We get shots from the bushes or from right behind the characters, constantly alluding to the secret watcher. Mike talking about the things that he's discovered as stories is also no coincidence. But he missed the one thing that connected all of the stories, which was tragedy. I love how bizarre this movie gets. It starts out so normal, seeming like a comedy drama about two friends coming together, but takes that crazy turn towards the halfway point that just ramps up and never stops. 
The constant questions and cryptic imagery caught my interest instantly, and I loved theorizing throughout about what the truth was and what was just a red herring. Constantly, Chris talks about satellites or his other paranoid theories, and the Frenchman mentions bending light and even hints towards an underground government base or the possibility of angels and aliens. But we now know that all of those were just little red herrings, hints towards some possibility that just never panned out. The one time that a truth is leaked is when Chris rants about rituals being given to some kind of deity. And this theory is backed up a few times in the film, when we see the cave etchings or even when we hear from a few of the cult members. It was a cool way to tell this story, and I loved theorizing throughout. This movie does have a connecting film, something that serves as a type of sequel but not a direct sequel at all, and I definitely plan to cover that soon. If you enjoyed this breakdown, then don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on the next one, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on resolution down in the comments below. But yeah, if you find yourself being drawn to odd recordings or photos of yourself from the future, it might be best to just ignore them and run as fast as you can. Bye bye. Oh, hell no!